the organizers for allowing me to present today. Uh, in 2014, researchers from the University of Oldenburg made the startling and controversial observation that caged robins housed near large cities were unable to orient themselves due north. This aberration was attributed to man-made electronic noise. They fortified this data with suggestions that you could rescue this phenotype using advanced grounding and insulation techniques. <laughs> the implications of this work are ecologically devastating. This idea that human technology already presents the opportunity to perturb innate biological functions. But it wasn't without criticism. See, uh, there were a few researchers, competitors in the field, who thought it lacked a certain reproducibility. Uh, so in that aim, uh, we sought to characterize animal migration surrounding one of the largest and most um, energy voracious scientific marvels in history, the Large Hadron Collider. Now, the LHC uh, requires an annual energy expenditure, expenditure equivalent to 300,000 homes. <laughs> its superconducting electromagnets produce a magnetic field and dipole that is 100,000 times that of Earth. <laughs> Despite this, we found no evidence whatsoever that the LHC could perturb animal migration on a broad scale. Uh, and we were prepared to accept a null hypothesis after nearly a decade of uh, documenting only these normal migration patterns. Now, this all drastically changed last year when the LHC began electrocuting weasels. <laughs> In 2016, we document an unprecedented number of fatal weasel interaction events. <laughs> that I feel is best modeled by the area of dead weasels under the curve. <laughs> and these are all attributed to a single species of weasel the common beech martin, Martes foena. Now, if this were a, uh, caused by an electromagnetic perturbation, we would anticipate that it would not demonstrate species specificity. So our working hypothesis then became that uh, this variability or this uh, pertur perturbation in animal migration mechanisms stems instead, of course, from uh, variability implicit to LHC experimentation. Now, the LHC documented a record number of particle collisions uh, in 2016, in addition to an uh, increase in proton beam strength. And we see that uh, the integrated luminosity, or the particle collision number coming from the LHC, correlates very nicely <laughs> with the increase in fatal weasel interaction events. Um, now, of course, I don't have to inform anyone in this audience that the integrated luminosity of the, of the particle accelerator is a function of essentially how many subatomic particles can be generated. And the proton beam strength will give you uh, the probability and the distribution of various subatomic particles generated by any given collision. So we combed data from the ALICE and CMS detectors on days correlated with flies, or fly days. <laughs> and see unequivocal evidence that Mart's foena possesses the ability to detect and migrate towards the site of Higgs boson particle synthesis, <laughs> and is thus the first mammal documented to demonstrate Higgs bosonoception. <laughs> Now, you have to assume, given the acquisition of this trait, that it was in some way positively selected for. And uh, 
we could perhaps maintain evidence uh, of this acquisition based on the narrow detection threshold that we've calculated for uh, this weasel's ability to detect Higgs boson, uh, Higgs boson particles. Um, so we did some calculations to that effect and found that the number of Higgs bosons produced in 2016 uh, was essentially equivalent to that found as a direct result of cosmic ray collisions with the Earth's surface. Uh, and from that, we can estimate that uh, this is a trait that was acquired uh, in order to pursue atmospheric migration, uh, meaning that the weasels are attempting to get to space. <laughs> to fortify this, we need to revisit the typical motivations for animal migration behavior. So, Animals undergo migration for any number of reasons. Uh, one, of the, one of the chief ones might be nutrient intake. Now, we can reasonably uh, consider that food intake is probably not a motivation for traveling to space. Uh, there's no food. Um, <laughs> along the same lines, we can assume that the extreme temperature fluctuations and the lack of water uh, in space would also rule out the likelihood that they're seeking physical comfort, uh, given that there's no air. Um, <laughs> now, the idea that maybe they're seeking to improve their mating conditions is an interesting one, and unfortunately a vastly neglected area of science with respect to space travel. Um, <laughs> however, we can anticipate the, that the actual act of sex in space is uh, due to zero gravity and friction, uh, improbable logistically, and also really, really gross. <laughs> um, so, so that's a question mark, perhaps. <laughs> However, we could anticipate that space travel would result in a 100% decrease in predation rates. Uh, now, overall, I think we can agree that actually traveling to space is in itself going to be not entirely justified by the disadvantages that space travel would house for a weasel. Um, <laughs> but we do find a point proximal to stratosphere, uh, proximal to the stratosphere, uh, that we've denoted as tropopausal equilibrium. Uh, <laughs> where the rates of predation are minimized and the creature comforts of Earth are relatively conserved, allowing weasels to perhaps exist there in relative harmony. And we can assume that maybe uh, the goal of Higgs bosonoception ba based migration mechanisms would instead be to travel to this point in the tropopause. Now, consistent with this, we find that Higgs boson particle synthesis uh, production actually reaches a uh, tangential maximum at the level of 18 kilometers above the Earth's surface, which exactly correlates to the level of the tropopause. <laughs> now, physicists, physicists are always trying to create bigger and better colliders. Uh, and we can anticipate then, as Higgs boson production is increased at these colliders, that the costs associated with fly-related damages could be catastrophic. Uh, now, assuming a proton beam strong enough to produce a Higgs boson, you can loosely and conservatively estimate the number of flies as a, result, as, uh, a function of the luminosity of any given detector uh, of accelerator. So we see that these hover right around two for the LHC in its current conditions. Uh, but the LHC is scheduled for a high luminosity upgrade in 2020, and we anticipate that this will result in a 210% increase <laughs> in fly events. Uh, now, similarly, the future circular collider, scheduled for, for construction and maintenance in uh, 2035, is going to reach <laughs> potentially a devastating number of fly events, uh, somewhere between 20 and 50. And that is a lot of dead weasels under the curve. <laughs> But it's not all bad. There are some advantages to characterizing Higgs bosonoception based me migration mechanisms uh, in that we currently operate the LHC uh, at a cost of about $5 billion uh, per year for individual photon-based detection mechanisms of subatomic particles. And it appears that we can 
essentially nullify all of these costs by replacing these detectors with a cage of wild-caught weasels. <laughs> And these wild-caught weasels uh, can be obtained for the cost of immunizing a single grad student against rabies. <laughs> now, uh, in closing, I do want to suggest that our animal care and review boards have expressed some hesitance with respect to sticking a cage of weasels directly into the beam of a particle accelerator. <laughs> in part due to the massive amounts of electromagnetic radiation produced by collisions of particles. So uh, fortunately, um, the seminal work in this field has already addressed a solution for this problem. <laughs> <laughs>